Welcome back to another online pie and bell class. Uh, this week we're looking at the bleach technique in watercolour. Remember to check my bio for links for my email and telephone number if you would like to come to one of our classes in Leighton Buzzard or Dunstable when they start up again. But for now we're just going to do these online ones. So at the moment I'm just making up some colours to put into the background. So I've got some yellows going on and I'm going to make up a bunch of greens. I'm using the yellow ochre, the lemon yellow, the turquoise and a little bit of brown, the burnt umber. And I'm going to mix these all together randomly to get myself multiple different greens to work with in my background. So I'm going to use my smaller brush just because if you try and use your wash brush to make up your colours, what ends up happening is you just get loads of water everywhere because the wash brush contains so much water in it. So it's easier using a smaller brush to mix up your colours and then come in with your wash brush afterwards. So you can see there I'm using a pipette. That's just to help me get enough water in there to make the colours as liquidy as I want them for the background because obviously we want them to still be vibrant but have a loose texture to them so that they go on nicely. And I'm using that for the other colours I've made. So you can see the difference between the two greens up the top. That top green is made with turquoise and lemon yellow, which means it has no interference from red, which means it's a really vibrant green. And that green beneath it has interference from red because I used the yellow ochre, which is a kind of orangey yellow. And it just means that I get a kind of more natural brownie green color from that. And this one, I'm just making a turquoisey brownie color which I can use when I get down to the bottom. So I'm coming in first with my yellow. The reason for that, even though it's halfway down the paper, is because it's the lightest colour. And if I come in with the green first, I'm not going to be able to wash out my brush enough to um, put the yellow in and have the yellow be vibrant. So the first thing I'm doing is covering my whole page with water, just so I've got a bit of room to play with it. And you can see I'm putting that yellow streak right in the middle, getting that yellow in there. And then I'm going to do the little green bit up the top. And then I'm going to start coming in. Now when I come to these darker tone colours, I'm actually going to change how I'm placing it. I'm going to start placing it back and forth. And this is because I want it to kind of be mottledy down here. I don't want it to be strokey and even. So I'm going to start bringing in these colours and go back and forth over each other. Now this is where having the paper wet will really benefit you because you'll have a little bit of room to play with it and it won't be dry straight away. And also it will get, do that beautiful splaying thing that watercolour often does. So I'm getting the colours. You can see how those top ones looked kind of horrible when they were first went in but because the paper's damp they've kind of soaked into it and they've given that kind of soft focus effect. And that will happen with all of them as long as your paper is wet enough beneath it. So I'm just bringing in those colours in those random kind of strokes all the way down and letting them soften themselves out. Now you can see at the bottom there the paper's kind of bowed a little bit and so I haven't got a lot of that colour going in the bottom. I can sort that out later. So what I'm using now is pure alcohol. Now I'm going to pipette a little bit into my palette to work with. But you can use watered down bleach or even dish soap if you add water to it. It just has to be liquidy enough to splat. So I'm also adding plain water to my yellow there. And the first thing I'm going to do is splat yellow to give myself some illusions of flowers in the distance. And you'll find that sometimes it goes up into that really top section. And that's fine if it goes up into that top section because you can actually just um, pad that out in a minute. But this has to be done whilst the paper is still very wet. That's why I'm doing this before I'm correcting any of that base bit at the bottom. So you can see me padding out those little yellow ones I didn't want right up there. And then I'm going to use that alcohol with my brush and I'm going to splat that on as well to give myself some of the white effect flowers. And don't worry if they kind of go a bit nuts because you can come in and sort them out later. You can repaint over these areas. Then I'm going to actually put ones where I want them to be, so I'm actually going to give myself some little dandelions and stuff in here, dandelion clocks. 
Now I can see that base layer has really bleached itself out because of the way the paper is and I'm going to come in in a minute and sort that out with some dark colours. I'm just getting in the bleach first because the bleach won't work if the paper is dry. So now I'm coming in and I'm going to just sort out these base areas and I really really want this to have a really nice white border so I really want dark around the edges anyway. So I'm going to start bringing in some of that darker colour really around all that bottom layer and up to the sides as well. And I'm probably going to touch in little bits of it into the actual picture where, where I can see it's still wet and I know it will splay enough. You can also reshape little areas. So like if you've got little uh, flowers that kind of didn't end up as a nice round spot and they kind of ended up combined to each other, you can kind of separate them out a bit in this point if you want, or you can wait till later to separate them out. You have a lot of time to play with this, so don't worry if things haven't gone exactly how you want them. You can see I've gone up into an area that's dry there and it looks a bit too horrible, so I'm going to use a little bit of water, sponge that off, kind of tap, tap it out with the uh, kitchen roll because I don't want it. I want all of this layer to be kind of soft apart from those bleached flats that are kind of quite harsh. I want everything else to be soft and going into each other. So in a minute I'm going to finish up with this layer and let that dry and then I can see what I'm going to work with on that next layer. So now it's dry I can actually see what I've got to play with and I'm going to come in and start putting in some little ideas of where the yellow flowers are so I'm going to go over some of the white ones with some of the yellow. I'm making up my other colours as well because these yellow flowers won't take long to dry. So I'm using some yellow, I'm going to use some yellow ochre to get those yellow flowers in and I'm going to make up some greens to put in at the stalks of the flowers and a little bit of grey just to add some dimension to the dandelion puffs. But I'm just playing around with it at the moment and deciding what I'm going to do. But the first thing I'm going to do is pick out some of those splatted yellow bits right up the top I can see because they don't really look like anything against that background so what I'm going to do is come in with a little brush and kind of get them to look more like flowers before I put the stalks on. So I'm making my grey up there for in the dandelion puffs with the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue. That will be for the insides of my dandelion puffs. Then I'm going to make the two greens. I think I've got maybe even more I can't remember how many greens I made up. Definitely made up a dark green and a lighter green. And then I'm going to have the yellow and the yellow ochre for the little tiny yellow flowers. So this isn't an overly difficult picture to try and do. I mean, I think the hardest bit is that first layer to get correct and get how you want it. But it's a really good one to play around with and get used to with the bleach effect. It's quite nice to kind of have that effect where it's really a soft circle kind of thing. It's really lovely. So now I'm using my small brush and I'm going to pop out these little yellow flowers just wherever I can see a splat or even if I can't see a splat but I want one there I'm just going to pop one in. And I'm not really following the picture, this is more of a kind of impressionistic version of this picture. I'm not overly going to worry myself about it being exact and really really good. Towards the picture I'm just going to do my own version. The fact of the matter is when you splat something you really don't get the flowers in exactly the same place as are on the, the picture that you're copying from, however you can still use the idea of how the stalks go and how leaves are to kind of get a similar sort of picture. It's definitely more of a kind of impressionistic version. Now you can see I'm using the yellow to fill in some of the white bleach spots. Just because I know we splatted yellow over the top of this, but the yellow that we splatted won't be as vibrant as if you color in the bleach spots yellow. And you can see there that when I'm adding yellow, I'm just adding little bits of yellow ochre into them as well, so they're a little bit two-tone.
I'm just picking random ones to fill in. Then I'm going to wait for them to dry and because I want to lean on the paper and then I'm going to start coming in with my little brush and I'm going to start making up all these little tiny stalks and stems of the flowers. Now you can do this part with um, coloured pencils if you want, if you find that a little bit easier to control than a tiny paintbrush. The other thing I am doing is varying the shade of green I'm using for these stalks and sometimes even kind of putting the stalk in and then padding it out as you can see there, put the stalk in and then I pad it out and that makes it look kind of further in the distance. So using a lighter green, using a darker green, padding them out, all of these things will help them look kind of in different stages of different places so they're further away. So I think I change up in a minute because I feel like that is far too dark when I'm putting it on that really light area there. So I end up adding a little bit of yellow to my green. I pad that out entirely. And then I come in with a lighter green because I realise how much darker that looks against that real pale bit of sky. So I make the lighter green and put it back in. And I feel like that works so much better. And also gives that illusion of that one being further away than the one I just painted in and I'm using the picture for reference I'm looking at how the stalks kind of grow how randomly they kind of go and I'm kind of trying to follow that and also they do tend to divide up into two or three and if you divide it into two or three and you find that you only have one flower that you have up there so draw the stalks more how you think the stalks are going to go and if there isn't a flower to connect it to then just do one of those little tiny buds that you see on the far left there that I did the kind of double bud or the single bud of an unopened flower and it is just about putting them wherever you want really it's just playing around so when I've done quite a few of these lighter ones in the center I think I get to the right hand side and I go darker again just to kind of even it out a little bit see me doing the little bud bits there and remember to always have your kitchen roll on hand just in case any of it goes too dark or too thick you can pad it out immediately before it's sunk into the paper and kind of stained in the paper So once I'm happy with the amount of these kind of twiggy bits that are going up, I am actually going to start bringing in some grass effects over that kind of middle section. And it's really your call where you stop this. You could stop it at this point, to be honest, and just bring a couple of stalks down the front, darker stalks connecting those front flowers if you wanted, and have it all as a much more loose watercolour. I'm actually going to kind of work a lot of colour over the top of it and play around with it a bit more. So I'm going to start bringing in some of that dark colour you can see to the right there. And when I put ones where I don't want them, look, I can just wash it out, take it out if I'm not happy with it, change the colour to something lighter. So now I'm trying to connect some of those um, middle kind of section flowers together. And you definitely want to kind of have an, an enough of these flowers to go across. You know, you definitely want to build it up enough so that it looks like a big sea of flowers rather than just a few. And I'm going to start kind of building round and shaping those flowers a little bit more. The bigger kind of yellow flowers that I spilled the bleach in with.
I still want it fairly loose though. I don't want them to be perfect flowers. I don't want them to look exactly like real flowers. I want them to have a kind of looseness and a kind of strange element of them. I don't want them to be exactly like in the photo. So now I'm going to just build up these side bits a little bit because I feel like I really want some dark down here. And I mean you could come in with loads of these kind of leaf shapes all over as well. That's another option. You could make it really kind of leafy rather than stalky. So you could bring those leaves all the way around and into elements inside it as well. So I started to follow more the fact that there was loads of stalks on the picture. So I'm bringing in different greens again. And I think the key here is to try and work with colours that are similar and then slightly darker than your mid-tone area so that you can see some of them a bit more than you can see others. And I feel like that makes it a little bit more realistic than just working with the dark over the top. If you kind of bring some of the colour that actually is that mid-tone colour and then stroke it up into the lighter colour, it kind of combines it all together a little bit more. And again, I'm going to be stroking around some of the like circular dandelion puffs and the yellow flowers and stroking some over the top to make it a little bit more realistic. Obviously you would have grass going behind and grass going in front and stalks going behind and stalks going in front. So you're just really placing them wherever and deciding whether you're going over things or not. You can control whether you go around those little circles or over the top of them. And you may get rid of a few but as long as you've got the bulk of them there, it doesn't really matter. So you can see there I'm swapping up to that mid-tone to that dark where I feel like it's necessary as I'm getting down towards the bottom I'm definitely going to go darker and actually the whole bottom front section is going to be that darkest possible colour that I kind of made out of the uh, turquoise and the brown with potentially a little bit of yellow I don't know if I put any yellow in it or if it was just turquoise and brown and a very dark kind of greeny colour but I'm definitely going to move more into that darkness as I am coming down and these three I'm kind of separating out a little bit but I am going to work some colour over them closer to the end but I'm trying to put some colour around them at this point. So obviously my paint was drying out a little bit at this time because I've taken quite a bit of time doing it so I just added a little bit more water just to liquidise it a little bit more. So this whole section where I'm putting in the stalks and leaves, I'm just haphazardly putting them in. And But like I said, if you liked it before this section, there's no reason why you have to put these little bits in. You could have just had it as quite a soft focus picture with the flowers in and stopped it at that point, And that would have been absolutely fine as well. I'm really up for you guys starting to think what you want compared to what I'm doing. So like if I'm doing it and you think, oh, I like that, but I liked it a little bit more before she got to that point absolutely then do that your way you know it is your picture i'm just doing a version of a picture to give you a guide of how you'd start but definitely take it your own way play around with it with your own ideas that's the whole point of art so i'm getting a lot more dark as i come down to the bottom you can see but i'm still changing up to that lighter green as well i'm not completely annihilating it and getting rid of it with just dark I am putting in lights and darks even at the front because there would be lights and shadows even at the front. It's just that I am definitely being a bit more heavy with the dark as I come towards the front and being a little bit more generous with it. So the absolute last thing I'm going to do on this picture before I'm happy with it is come in with my thicker brush and just really give myself really dark elements right at the bottom because when I want to take off that tape I want it to be really really dark so I'm coming in with some greys now in those dandelions and I'm just putting a little bit of grey in the center and I'm going to come and wash it out a minute in a minute with some water and it's literally just to give it something 
to make it a little bit interesting rather than just a white kind of splodge so I'm just giving it a little bit of colour so that's the grey I mixed up and you can see how putting that darker element in the middle does help it out to look a little bit more like a dandelion but I do wash it out a little bit I don't want it to be so harsh I think I made it a little bit too harsh now and made it look more like the centre of the flower rather than that kind of soft focus grey so I did wash them out a little bit and just push that colour around a little bit and that looks much better I feel so again it is a kind of a thing that you play with you just decide where you want it if you go too dark then lighten it up a little bit put a little bit of water in and wash it out a bit so now I think I start creating some sort of stalks for the dandelions but also I think I come in with this really dark colour and give myself some of those unopened dandelions that you see so I wanted to have some elements of those in there but they were really simple to do I just did like a stalk and then a, tear, a teardrop shape on top of it and that kind of gave me that idea of a unopened one so literally just kind of teardrop shapes wherever I was seeing definite stalks and that just gives you those little elements of unopened dandelion clocks So I think at this point I was just kind of trying to bring more dark into that base but I really really wanted it to be a lot more darker so in the end I end up just changing up the brush and giving myself a lot more dense colour coming across the base and I definitely wanted some really long strokes of grass so I was trying to create those going down so that they went all the way across So there wasn't just little flicks of grass there was a couple of really long ones but long ones obviously are a little bit harder to do than the short little flicks because you run out of paint you have to re-dip sometimes so I tend to like do a lot of little flicks and then at the end I bring in kind of long strokes over the top just to give myself that element of the longer grass going over the top afterwards so now I'm going to swap up I'm going to use up all this dark green that I'm creating just to kind of fill in the base because I really want that base to have a really nice strike down across the base of it to make it really dark so where it's white from where the tape's been it's going to look really really striking there and at this point I'm literally just using up all colours that I've got left over and definitely bring it all the way across your tape you know that's why the tape's there definitely go all the way across it and it'll look a lot more natural when you take the tape off so now I'm just taking the tape off and then that you can see the finished picture Oh, I do think I just soaked up a little bit of that paint because there was quite heavy across that bottom bit and I didn't want to take the tape off with it soaking wet So I do think any kind of summery picture like this really looks nice with the white frame of the paper around the edge. And there you go. Well, finished picture. Thank you. Bye.